that's one of the great things about Hall of Fames, you know, that once you go in there, you're in there forever. And I don't know if in the Radio Hall of Fame, I don't know if the busts or the guys, the people talk to each other or not. In the Pro Football Hall of Fame, I think they do. So you have some experience with that. Do you know what those conversations are like? No, because you don't know until you get there. I mean, you're not sure, you know, what they're going to be talking about until you're not here any longer, and the only thing left is your bust, and your bust is in Canton, Ohio. And the thing about it is they don't talk to each other until the room is dark and everyone's left. There's no one in the room, and then the bus talk to each other. And, you know, the more I think about it, I mean, this is crazy, I know, but I think it has to be. It has to be that if, if you know, if this is, you know, what it is and you're in it forever and, you know, that you have, there has to be more to it than, you know, there's your bus, there's your picture, there's something, you know, it, it has to be your legacy. And if it's your legacy, it goes on forever. Let's talk about radio. You grew up in the Bay Area. Do you have memories of sports and radio as a kid? Well, yeah. I mean, everyone, everyone did. I mean, that's that's the first thing we had. I mean, I I remember I was a big San Francisco Seals fan. I mean, that was the only real professional team we had, and I remember the the name of the play-by-play announcer at that time. His name was Jack McDonald. Jack McDonald, the old walnut farmer. You know, I think it was from Walnut Creek or something. But Jack McDonald, well, you know, and his home run call was, it's out Aunt Maggie's window. Going, going, gone, it's out Aunt Maggie's window. So I think, I think everyone remembers, you know, their first radio play-by-play broadcaster. Mine was Jack McDonald. And so after your coaching career, you sort of found yourself in broadcasting without expecting it. Yeah, I think that's why it worked because I didn't expect it. Uh, you know, I I didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew I was retiring from coaching, and I kind of felt guilty that I hadn't spent much family time, and I was going to spend time with my wife and my kids, and I found out that was overrated because they had stuff to do. You know, so you'd say, "Yeah, I'm home now. I'm you know with my wife and the kids," and and they're gone. They got stuff to do. They're here. They're there. And there was me and the dog. And uh, so I, I said to the dog one day, I, I got to do something. And I, my first opportunities in television, I turned down because I, I didn't, uh, I didn't want to do that. And then someone said to me, you know, if you don't try it, then you'll never know because they want you now. They may not want you then. And then I got into to radio and television about the same time, both on a, a trial, very short-term basis. My, my first radio experience was at uh, KSFO uh, with Gene Nelson, and they just lost their sports guy, so they wanted someone temporary to fill in until they hired the sports guy, and then and then when they hired the sports guy, I figured, boom, I'm done, that's it, no more radio. And they said, oh, no, 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 you're still on. <laughs> you're, not, you're not a sports guy. And so that's, that's how I stayed there. And then on television, I had four games. You know, I had a contract that said I could do four games. So that was temporary. And, uh, and you know, look what happened. Gene Nelson, Frank Dill, Mike Clary, Al Hart, you've worked with a lot of real – Stan Bunger. Well, no, it's it's a great group. I mean, that's that's the thing. I mean, you know, there are certain times that you're lucky in life, and one of the things that I've always been lucky in in both radio and television is I've always had a great partner. And you know, and you know, you talk about the radio guys; they were the best. I mean, you know, they're they're all Hall of Famers. They're you know the best ever, and. And and that's that's a secret, you know. You say how do you how do you do something? Have a good partner, you know. And then the, the partner will always make you look a lot better than you are. And then then in television, for all intent and purposes, I had I had two partners, Pat Summerall and Al Michaels. 
and and that's pretty good. I mean, you add my radio partners and my television partners, and I'm the luckiest guy in the world. 